collect for this Trinity Sunday, the 7th of June. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we light the candles for our five churches of the Mees Valley Benefice. For St Peter's Elford. For St Matthew's Harleston. For St Andrew's Clifton Campville. For St Matthew's Chilcot. And for Holy Trinity, Edingale, on this Trinity Sunday. Today's reading is taken from Psalm chapter 8. O Lord our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. It is sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky which you have made, at the moon and the stars which you have set in their places. What are human beings that you think of them? Mere mortals that you care for them? Yet you made them inferior only to yourself. You crowned them with glory and honour. You appointed them rulers over everything you made. You placed them over all creation. Sheep and cattle and the wild animals too, the birds and the fish and the creatures in the seas. O Lord, our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, beginning to read at verse 16. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. I imagine that most people who are watching today have a garden, or have had one at some point, or if not, have planters or pots in which to sow the seed. But we don't usually just sow seed and then sit back thinking, all done. Job done. Gardeners will say that seeds need to be tended, weeds removed, seedlings planted on, fed, watered, until they produce flowers or produce for us to enjoy. The cycle of growth, change and development takes place over time, dependent on the care given. And it seems to me that care or nurture of people 
is the focus of the text which we've just heard. Nurture is about growing. It's about creating the expectation of growth and an environment in which people can grow and develop. For individuals on a journey of faith, nurture is not about getting more people into the church building. Nurture is about people growing, developing and changing as Christians and church, the body of Christ, providing the support and space for that to happen over and over again, God willing. Today, then, we're looking at the very last section of Matthew's Gospel. These verses are called the Great Commission, since here is the place where Jesus gave his disciples their instructions about what to do next. This was Jesus sending them off into the world with a specific job to do. First of all, we hear something about Jesus when we read in verse 18, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of their lives then and of ours now. This is Jesus' command to his disciples. This is what they're to do. Jesus is Lord of his church. And as his church, we too need to take this commission seriously. So that Jesus' command shapes the life of our church and our lives. There is actually only one command in these verses. Make disciples. And then, therefore, go. On this occasion, the command is to make disciples. And the other verses contain verbs which tell us how the church would go about that. In this sense, Jesus is giving the disciples, if you like, their voluntary contract of employment, mission. Perhaps the best way to understand what makes a disciple is to look for an example. So I looked at Peter. Peter first appears in biblical text when Jesus says, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then we have Jesus with Peter following him everywhere. Peter's allegiance. He sees Jesus answer other people's prayers. He watches Jesus and constantly learns from him. Then, of course, Peter doesn't always get it right. He even denied Jesus. But Peter is forgiven and restored by Jesus. All of that, to me, is the process of discipleship beginning with a simple trust and an allegiance to Jesus. And so from that tiny beginning of come, follow me, the Bible tells us later that Peter became the rock on which Jesus would build his church. Our trust in Jesus begins as we start out on our journey of faith. But life experiences, questions, doubts, will all test that trust, as we all know only too well. We learn to trust Jesus, though, when we're in dark places, when we have huge decisions to make and don't know which way to go. It's not always straightforward, is it? Sometimes, in fact, 
it's excruciatingly hard. Yet, as our trust in Jesus grows, so our faith grows. Our task, then, is to love one another. Create the atmosphere where people can learn, grow and develop. That's nurture. As I've already said, this isn't always easy. This is where experiencing God's presence in different ways nurtures us and our growth in faith. As we learn to trust God our Father. It's as a parent protecting us, as a friend encouraging us, or as a wise guide directing and leading us. Supported and uplifted by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Trinity. This is how we grow in faith, supported by the assurance that I am with you always, even unto the end of the end. Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, all at once, is beyond our human understanding. 
yet closer to us than breathing. To the bidding God of mystery and compassion, we respond, you know us and you love us. Called by the great God we worship, let us pray fervently for the church and for the world. We bring before you, O God, the needs of the church in its weakness and its potential. Revive and refresh us, teach and direct us. Inspire all who preach, teach and gossip the good news and uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, the particular problems of our age and our culture. Renew us in a commitment to community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Protect the vulnerable and sensitize the hearts of all who have become anesthetized by images of violence. And we pray especially for all those who are suffering across the world because of racism of any description. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and love us. We bring before you, O oh God, the nurturing of our children and young people in homes and parenting, in schools and teaching in the expectations, pressures and dangers, in the hopes and possibilities for good. And we pray especially at this time for all those parents homeschooling their children, for the worry and the strife that this may be causing, and for all those key workers who are trusting their children in our schools at this time to be cared for, to be loved, to be nurtured, to be taught. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and love us. We bring before you, O God, the hungry and malnourished, the greedy and the complacent, those who are ill and those who care for them the unhappy, the lonely, and those who comfort them. All who are undergoing surgery, looking ahead for surgery, or are taking place in painful treatments, and for all those who have no one to turn to. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O oh God, those who have died in faith and will now see you face to face. Those for whom death speaks of fear or annihilation and those who are unprepared to meet you. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O oh God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 